I'm not really sure what I'm doing with this video. It's a bit of a wing and a prayer, but I wanted to show you a couple of little hacks that I have come up with and I need to transplant and up-pot some of my Hoyas. It's actually all Hoyas, so I need to up-pot. We leave that for another video. Hi guys, my name is Gronia and this is my channel Jungle Flowers Canada. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, so let's get started. So here, you can't actually see, but I have some pawn. <laughs> and I have these little cups, which I told you guys about um, probably last year. And they're little net pots. Oh, my son is coming in now at the moment. But anyway, they're little net pots. And they're great for when you are trying to root cuttings and just keep, you can actually keep Hoyas in here until they become more established. But I was putting them into just regular pots. Oops but it meant that I had to keep lifting it out and sometimes it would get dry and I would forget to water them. So, it's going to be mayhem now because my dogs are going to lose their life because my son is here. Oh, hi son. <laughs> the dogs must be at the back. So oh, yeah. quiet. Okay, so I had these in the basement. They're just cups from Dollarama. There are, let me tell you now, they're three dollars and there are 20 of them. And these pots, fit perfectly in them. So I've been making little hydroponic pots out of these and they've been working amazingly because I can see when I need to add water to them. So let me show you what I have been doing. So I have some uh, mesh, it's just uh, screen mesh from the window, so any mesh that you have. I have an old macrame hanger that never really hung straight. So I have been using this as my wicking cord and obviously my two pots and my palm. So let me show you what I've been doing. And hi babies. Um, and it's been working terrifically for me. Let's take a piece. So I've just been cutting a piece of the macrame, cut off the frayed end. And I actually get two pots out of this length. So, Let's just cut this baby in half and um, the dogs are loving their, their brother's home. Are you not working today, huh? Uh, no, I'm not working today. I'm working tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Tomorrow on Wednesday. Okay. Stay here. Stay here. So, I am just putting my wicking cord, so there are holes in the bottom of this pot so I'm just putting my wicking cord in and then I'm taking my mesh and just cutting a little square of mesh to put in the bottom because the pawn falls through. So a little square of mesh into the bottom of the net pot and then we're going to fill with pawn. So we have the Louis Bois and the outer variegated um, Bella. So I'm just going to tip these in. You can see there are some nice roots on the Louis Bois. Actually, I think I was watching Bazzi's plants and Nero said it's called Lie de Bois, that it somehow it got, the name got mixed up. And here's the outer variegation. Okay, so I can actually just empty that pawn in there because we can reuse it. It's not that old. And now we're going to take our, I'm going to still call it Louis Bois because that's what I have in my head. And we're just going to top it up with our palm. Oh, I forgot to bring up, I do have Osmocote downstairs, um, which I forgot to bring up with me, which I have now been sprinkling into my pots with palm. Um, and I do also use the, um, the hydroponic I use Root Farm, it's a Canadian made company and I use their hydroponics. I just actually ordered some from Amazon and it was actually a, just a dollar cheaper than it was in Lowe's and um, Home Depot and those big departments. Usually it's more expensive on Amazon. Okay, so there we have the first baby and let's get one of these pots. Voila! 
absolutely perfect. So now I can see when I need to water and it acts like a, wick a wicking method. So there is the first one. So guys, I thought I'd take this opportunity while I am repotting some of these to tell you about some of the hacks that I use and um, that I have kind of discovered or, you know, been inspired to do and um, that will help you save some money and also um, get the same effect as the more expensive versions. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was mosquito traps. I'm going to put a photo of them up on the screen. So these work exactly the same as the Katya, but you can buy them very inexpensively. So what I do is I put a yellow sticky a trap into the basket that catches the mosquitoes, and then you can actually see what you're catching. And they have worked tremendously. The ones I bought were like 14 or $15, and I've had them, as I say, for almost a year, and they run 24 seven. Now, a lot of them do have a sensor on them that they'll only come on at night, but I actually just run mine all the time. And it has definitely helped. Um, you don't see those yellow sticky traps. And you will see an odd um, fungus gnat in my, in my house, but very, very little. Sorry, Kieran is working from home today. And um, I just had to remind him to put his earphones on because he's, li he's uh, listening to some training courses there. And I'm sure you guys don't need to hear all of that. <laughs> so anyway, um, what was I saying? Yes, so, the, so these work... They, so these work great and you know they're quiet they don't make a lot of noise I have one in my bedroom and uh, it, that one the one in my bedroom was like really cheap and it is brilliant like it catches everything flies the whole you know you have that fly flying around when you're trying to sleep and it get, takes care of them as well so um, that was the first thing I wanted to talk to you about and um, staying with fungus gnats actually I'm just before we do that let's have a look at this this is my Croniana Black Oh, I have to be careful, there's all water there. It is just so pretty. I'm hoping you can see it. And it has done tremendously. Like it has so many roots. So this is probably too big to put into one of these little net pots. So what I'm going to do, I also bought these guys. I have to tell you actually about these before we move on. These are just the perfect size and they are clear. And I got 30 of them for like 20 something dollars. I can't remember exactly what it is. I will put it up on the screen and I'll put a link in the description. And what I do is I use my soldering iron, which I'm not gonna plug it in now because my, all my sockets in this room are taken up with grow lights. And what I do is I puncture holes like about an inch up. I do four of them all the way around. And I this is when I'm using pawn and then when you fill up your water, fill up your pot with water, anything in excess flows over and then you have a perfect amount for wicking up to your plants. So again, about an inch up, I go with four holes with my soldering iron and then I put it in an outer pot and it works brilliantly. It's exactly actually what I did with these cups. I put holes in these cups and so it's exactly the same method, but it's a bigger pot for a lot less money than you pay for a clear plant pot. So let's have a look at the roots on this baby. And actually they're not that big. So probably not big enough to put into here now. We probably could still use the net pot. So I think I'm gonna still use the net pot for this. Um, I thought the roots would, were bigger, but you, if I show you the net pot, you'll see we still have room. Oops, we still have a lot of room to grow. So we use the net pot for this one as well. Okay, I'm jumping all over the place. Let's get back to the fungus gnats. I, I find the best treatment for fungus gnats is mosquito dumps. They are de by far the best. Don't waste your time and your energy using hydrogen peroxide. Doesn't work, guys. I can tell you I've tried it. So I buy my mosquito dumps from a company. Um, oh gosh, they're a um, health food company and I will put the name up. I just can't think of it now. And they do have a website and they do deliver all over Canada and you can buy your mosquito dunks for like half the price of what you pay for them on Amazon. So I will put a link for that. And what I do is I pop half of a mosquito dunk into my watering can and I just leave it there. So every time you top up your water, it becomes infused with the mosquito dunks and then you just water your plants with it. And it most definitely helps 
It is the best thing I have found. Now, another thing I have used, but you do have to be careful with this and make sure that you don't have pets or children around. And ideally, if you like, you know, um, leave the room when you do this. But there, Dr. Doom also do a fogger. So if you happen to have a really, really bad outbreak, you can fog your room. Like obviously, I would double mask, fog your room, leave the house for at least two hours. When you come back, they recommend then that you could like open your windows. In the dead of winter, I didn't do that. I actually just stayed out for shopping, go for lunch, go whatever you need to do. And that will kill every active live mosquito, or not mosquito, fungus gnat. So it'll kill every single fungus gnat that's floating around your, your house, if you fog your house. And then start with your mosquito junks. And I pretty much guarantee you that your issue will be eradicated. Like I see an odd one um, and like literally, I don't even see one every day, but I will see an odd one. And I, but I remember I always have my traps going so they will catch them. I have found nothing else has worked. So, I would recommend that. Now, you can also buy um, another Dr. Doom. It's not the fogger. It's, uh, it's perfect for spider mites, thrips. Oh, that's another thing. I got thrips in this greenhouse cabinet behind me. So I took the fogger and I sprayed it. You don't, you only hold it for a couple of seconds. Sprayed it in there. I left the house and the thrips were gone. They killed the thrips straight away done so it was like I, I couldn't believe it I had no issues again with it after the first spray there's also another Dr. Doom spray which is ideal you, you spray this on the leaves and it's amazing for spider mites and I've used it for thrips as well and it works so uh, Dr. Doom is a Canadian made and it is like very strong and potent so you do have to be careful you don't want to inhale it so make sure you always wear a mask and not, not the one that you spray directly on the leaves, but the fogger. But absolutely brilliant, guys. I would um, absolutely recommend it. And uh, you will, you, you won't, I, I actually, I think it, for me, it is the best way to treat pests on my plants. So there we have our black, what is it called again? Lacunosa black. And again, you can see, I will be able to see when it needs to be watered. So for thrips, I also use Castile soap and neem oil. I find that works very well also. So if you, you know, if it's cold, you don't have anywhere to go, but you just want to give them an immediate treatment, that is amazing. I can't give you the exact quantities. I get a spray bottle, I put a drop of neem oil, and I put a good squirt of Castile soap in there. I usually get the one with tea tree oil because tea tree oil is also a natural repellent for bugs. And I find that works very well also but for a more permanent solution the Dr. Doom is definitely the way to go. So let's look now at my Codata. So my Codata lost all its leaves and it was really really struggling. I hope you can see there now it's looking so pretty. So I took it out of soil and I put it into pond and it has come on tremendously. So I'm going to take a look at what's going on with the roots and see and then I'll decide which pot to put it into. You can see, you know, oh my gosh, take a moment, take a moment. Okay, so we can see here the roots are not that big and I won't disturb them too much. So we again can use our net pot for this because there's still plenty of room for it to grow. So if you watched, um, I think it was episode five of my Hoya update um, mini series, um, I showed you some of my really beautiful Hoyas that I had in my kitchen window. So my house was built in 1981, so there are issues with insulation. It is quite a cold, my kitchen is quite cold in the winter. So I put a heat mat in the window. I have to say guys, it was game changing. All the plants in my window are doing tremendously. Okay, this is okay. Um, you gotta get this before it starts to unravel. Now you could actually put a bit of tape around it if you like, are so inclined. I'm too lazy. I'm not gonna do that. I just will 
keep foostering until I get it through. But it was a game changer. That heat mat was just incredible. Now I get beautiful sun. It's a southwesterly window. So I get beautiful sun in the winter and my Hoyas have just been amazing. Um, I'm really happy with the growth. If you want to get a more in-depth um, update on them, watch the episode 5 of my Hoya update and you'll see how incredible they have done. They have just flourished and I really believe it's the combination of sun and heat. So I'm struggling here guys, you can see. There we go. Okay, so now we want to put the data in here. Oh, this is like definitely a favorite plant of mine. I'm just gonna stick back in that trellis that it's on. So you can see there's still plenty of room for roots in this one. You don't want to put it in too big a pot <clears throat> too soon, but eventually I'm hoping that they will all go into these. And then I also have the longer ones, which I have my bigger Hoyas in. So actually all the Hoyas that are in my kitchen window, well not all of them, but most of them, are in the, the longer version of this soup container. And they are, like, it's so much less expensive than the plant box. Excuse me. Excuse me. What's all that about? Shh. Just try and ignore them. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Okay, so now we have our Hoya Cardata. Pop it in there. Gorgeous. I should also mention, I know a lot of people ask me how I root my cuttings when I import them. And I do exactly this. I put them in these little plastic containers with holes, again, you know, probably three quarters of an inch up on in these ones. And I put them in the pond and I put them in my prop boxes and I leave them there until they root. And it has worked tremendously for me. So um, you can also root them in water. I have on occasion put them directly into soil using rooting hormone, but I'm finding the pawn in a prop box um, definitely works very much quicker and works very, very well. So here we have, okay, Paula gave me this. And I, oh, is it a Walliniana or a Weimani? I can't remember which. And she very graciously gave me hers. I don't know if you can see the the leaves on that and I put it into this little cup but I think I'm going to now put it into my little net pot so again I can see when it needs to be watered so let's do the same yeah so we can see that there is there are very little roots on this there may it may have come with roots and I killed them I'm not sure what the the story is but there are some new roots coming out they're very very tiny so I'm going to do, put it in, into the net pot. I could have left it in here to little bit further, but um, I, I actually had it, this, the inside pot was very small, so I was a little worried that um, it, it might get overwatered. Actually, you know what I've fallen back in love with again? I don't know if any of you are feeling the same, the Painted Lady Philodendron. So I had it, it never did tremendously, but now it's starting to take off. And I'm excited for it to grow bigger so that I can put it on one of my plant stands. I'm thinking I'll put it in my kitchen with my um, silver sword and what else have I out there? I have a variegated subvastatum. Um, I'm, I've seen some on YouTube and on Instagram and I'm like, you know what, it really is a pretty plant. And it kind of took a back seat to other plants recently. Bit like the Birkin, right? That was, you know, it was sought after and then it actually died out very quickly, but it is incredibly beautiful. So I'm growing, I have actually a couple of um, pieces rooting and I will make up a nice pot of a couple of pieces and then hopefully they, it will get bigger and I will put it in my kitchen on my beautiful plant stand that I bought in Home Sense. Okay, what are we putting in here? Remind me. Oh yes, this one that I got from Paula. And as usual, the girl is incredible. She never comes empty handed. She puts me to shame. And then I'm always trying to give her plants, but she has everything I have. 
<laughs> but I was able to actually give her something on Saturday, which I was really happy about because, you know, we like to, to um, reciprocate, right? So anyway, this is a new baby that I got from Paula. Though I had one and it wasn't, like it died. It actually was doing great when I got it and then it just tanked and I, like I have it back down in the prop box, but nothing's happening. I think it's good and dead. Okay, so here we have one more. And Oh, I want to show you this. Um, I'm thinking, is it ready? I think I'm going to leave this in this pot because I would then like to transfer it into one of these. Because I wanted to show you this. I'm not actually going to transplant this. So it is the Hoya and it's A-C-E-H. So nobody knew how to pronounce it, Asa, but I actually Googled it and it's from Indonesia and it's a place called Ache. So it's actually Ache, the Hoya Ache. And mine is almost metallic looking. I'm going to actually bring it forward to you. I don't know if it'll come up on the screen. But it has an ever so slight, almost iridescent look to the leaf. It really is beautiful. And I'm so excited to have it. Um, and when it's, you know, when the roots get a little bit bigger, I will put it into one of the bigger soup containers and um, the roots I'm not see, really seeing much in the root department I can't see any roots visible there but uh, once I do I will transplant that up so I just wanted to take this out to show it to you and to let you know how it's pronounced so the Hoya Ache. Now I wanted to give you a little tip guys so when you're using these pots, if, um, actually if you were in Canada, this is filthy, I have to wash it. These are from Dollarama and they, I don't know, you get two or three of them probably for $1.50. You can see that this pot fits great in here, but it pops down too low. So it's very difficult when there is medium, medium in it to get it back out. So if you're putting it in, you know, if, you're, if you have this situation, like, oh, I, I can't get it out. I've been taking my masking tape and I've been making two little handles. So just cut your masking tape or painter's tape, I think you call it here in Canada. And then I fold it in half, but I leave a little bit on the bottom where it's sticky. And then just stick it onto the side of your pot, one on one side and one on the other. My scissors is giving up the ghost, it, uh, I, I use and abuse my scissors. So yeah, two little sticky tabs there. And then, the, like especially if it's Dollarama sticky um, tape, sometimes it's not that strong. And then just take another piece and just go down the bottom of your little handle, like so. And then when you have your planted plant in there, and you want to check it for water, just take your two little handles and you can pull it out. So that's just a little tip for you. So I think that's it for today, guys. I hope that it was useful and it was enjoyable. If you have any questions or comments, don't forget to ask below. If you wouldn't mind putting the green heart emoji in the comments to let me know you watched till the end, that would be amazing. And I'd like to wish you all a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me.